All right, so the last thing we did, I think, was example one. So on example one, uh, you had an interval that we were finding all the angles that were between 0 and 2 pi that would work for the equation. But what do you think you're going to do if there's not an interval? There's going to be an infinite number of solutions. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we have the equation sine of x equals 1 half. So I have a sine curve. I kind of extended it. It doesn't look great at the end, but that's okay. Um, and so 1 half would be about right here. So I'm just going to draw, and you guys can too, a horizontal line where y is 1 half. And so just this two and a half periods, we already have six answers where the sine curve is equal to one half. So it's going to be impossible for us to list out every single angle in the world that has a sine that's one half. So I can tell you this one is going to be pi over six. And this one is going to be five pi over six. Any ideas on this one? This next one to the right? Seven. seven pi over six would be right here. So it's actually negative one half. Well, 11 pi over six would be right here. It's also negative one half for the sign. So let's be bigger than two pi. Three pi over four is right here, and its sign is square root of two over two. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you, it's okay. Um, so we can take that pi over six, and we can add the period to it. So what would that that would be twelve? So thirteen pi over six would be the next one. All right, and then for this one over here, we can take the five pi over six and add the period to it. Okay. What about this one on the far left? You don't have to give me that answer, but what would you do to get it? Yes, so pi over 6 minus 2 pi, and then 5 pi over 6 minus 2 pi. Like we could keep going and we would add 4 pi and then we would add 6 pi. And so um, we can, what we're going to do to represent all of the solutions is we're going to do plus 2 in pi. Where n is going to be any integer. Now, <coughs> this book currently is only doing sine and cosine equations. Um, and that's okay. Uh, so it's plus 2 in pi for sine and cosine. Now later, we're probably going to do some tangent. What do you think you would add for tangent? What's the period of tangent? Pi. pi. So you would just add in pi for tangent. Right? So if we want to represent all the solutions, we would say x is equal to pi over 6 plus 2 in pi and 5 pi over 6 plus 2 in pi. All right. So the next directions we're going to have, for example, 2, just says to find all the solutions. It doesn't say all the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So whenever you see a trig equation that says find all the solutions you need to know you're going to have to do that plus 2 in pi for sine and cosine. Okay, so our first step is still the same. Uh, we want to isolate the trig equation, or the trig expression. So what would y'all do? 
divide by two. Now these get really repetitive because if you're not using a calculator, you're just using the hand trick, there's only <coughs> so many possibilities there can even be. All right, this probably looks really familiar. We're going to pretend like we didn't just do the same problem. So let's say we're just starting over and we want to find the angles that have a sine of one half. So because we just said a minute ago, or we just wrote a minute ago, that to find the sign using the hand trick is the square root of the bottom fingers over two. So how many bottom fingers do we want? One. We want one. Which finger has that? Pi over six. All right. So then we're going to need to go to this guy that has pi over six. And one of these other um, angles is going to be a solution as well. Five pi over six. So since it's positive, and sine is positive and quadrant one and two, those are our two answers we're going to use. All right. The difference between that and what we did before is now when we give our answer, pi over six, we're going to add two in pi to it. And then five pi over six plus two in pi. Just a little extra step. You just have to recognize when you have to do it. That's what makes it kind of difficult. All right, now the next ex few examples have an added step. So what's different about B than what we did on all the others? Yeah, we have a two, a two theta. So it's gonna be another extra step at the end. We're still gonna start off the same way by dividing by this two. Then if we're trying to figure out angles that have a cosine of one half, and we're going to use, if you want to use the hand trick, it's the square root of the top over two. And so for this one, it was a one up there. So we want one top finger. So it's going to be pi over three. All right, then we have to go to our pi over three guy. Where else is the cosine going to be positive one half? Five pi over three. All right, so that's because of all students take calculus. It's cosines positive in quadrant one and quadrant three. All right, so here we go. So before, and all the ones before, at this point you were like theta equals, theta equals, theta equals. What do you think we need to do here? Two theta, two theta equals, nice. So two theta equals pi over three plus two n pi and five pi over three plus two n pi. But we don't want two theta, we want theta. So what do you do? Yeah. So it's kind of weird because we do have to divide fractions by two. So if you're going to divide pi over three by two, what do you think you get? I just hear mumbling. What did you say? Oh, sorry. No, anybody. <laughs> By half? So it would be pi over 6, right? So you can take half. So a lot of people can think, okay, I know a half of a third is a six. That's not hard. Or you can multiply the denominator by 2, or you can multiply by 1 half. All of those things are the right thing to do. Now, 2 n pi divided by 2, that's easy. That's just n pi. Right. And then 5 pi over 3 divided by 2 is going to be 5 pi over 6. And then plus n pi again. That represents all of the solutions in the whole world for that equation. All right. So that's pretty much it. Um, C and D are kind of weird. I wanted to throw those in there because they have pi in your um, equation already. So it makes it a little different. But we're going to start off the same way by dividing by 2. All right, and then we want to figure out what angles have this 
a sine of negative square root of 3 over 2. So since it's sine, that means we want three bottom fingers. And that is going to uh, correlate with the angle that's pi over 3. But pi over 3 is not going to be one of your answers because the sine of pi over 3 is positive, not negative. So what quadrants should this come from? Three. Yes. Three and four. All right, so you just go to your pi over 3 graph you drew and then just pick the angles that are in quadrants 3 and 4. Don't forget that because we weren't given the interval. We're given all the solutions we do plus 2 and pi. Oh, what did I do wrong? I forgot the... I didn't bring down the pi over 2. So it's pi over 2 theta equals all those things. All right, and then we want to get rid of that pi over 2. We could divide by it, but what would be better? Multiply by the reciprocal. All right, so all these pi's are going to cancel out. So 4 pi over 3, that's going to be 8 over 3. All right, and then when I do a 2 and pi, the pi's will cancel out. What do y'all think? 4 in. You guys figure out the, the rest of that, please. <laughs> All right, any questions? Okay, we're going to do one more. So for D, um, where do we go if it's the cosine equals zero? Unit circle. Unit circle, got it. And we wrote that down yesterday. Uh, if you don't remember it, you might write it down again. But any time the sine or cosine is equal to one, negative one, or zero, we're going to go to the unit circle. So here's this unit circle. Um, we want to know when the cosine of the angle is equal to zero. So cosine is going to be the x coordinates. So there's two answers. Yep, that's those are the ones that the x coordinate is zero. Okay, so there's technically infinite number of answers. We we use those two, and we add two and pi. Now, because those two are pi apart, we technically could just do this one plus n pi if you wanted to, but it's fine. Usually, I don't want to talk about that today because you're doing good and I don't want to like start something weird. <laughs> so you can do that if you want to. All right, what do we do now? Or just divide by pi on this one. Or it, either way, it works. So if we divide pi over 2 by pi, what do you think that would be? Not just 2, 1 half. Yeah. And then that would be 2 in. And that would be 3 halves plus 2 in. All right. Any questions? It's fine if you have questions. I like to get things straightened out at the end if we can. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, so today, um, if you were here yesterday, you start with 10 through 24 even. If you weren't here yesterday or you didn't do it, I wouldn't know because I'm not really checking it today. But um, the total assignment is 2 through 24 even. But you probably already have four of them done. 